In this video, we are going to focus on implementing track marks that are left behind our tanks when they are moving, as well as the engine sound, so it is a bit quiet now if we start moving. We will hear an engine roaring a bit louder, and those will be the feedback for the movement mechanic of our game. Okay, let's get going! This video is part of the series of videos about creating a 2D top-down tank game. We will explore different features of this game, each as a standalone video. Hi, I'm Peter and welcome to Sunny Valley Studio Tutorials. In the previous video, we have improved the looks of our enemies so they look a bit more dangerous, as well as we have implemented this UI health bar in the world space so that we can see our enemy's health and it will work for the enemies that are moving as well as for the static enemies and we can as well see that we have the explosion and the explosion sound when our enemy explodes so is killed and this adds to the effect of our shooting mechanic in this video i would like to add some skid marks and some engine roar sound to our tank so that we can have some feedback for the movement mechanic that we have so let's maybe start with the engine audio Let's maybe start with the engine sound so we can hear some engine roar when we are moving and when we are standing still. So we should uh, head to our audio, the Kenny assets, sci-fi sounds and here in the audio section we should see some engine sounds. So we have space engine 0, 1, 2, 3. And at the bottom we have the small version of those sounds. So let's play the first uh, space engine small 0, 0, 001. This will be our tank sound, so tank engine sound. Now, I want to implement this for our player, and our player is using the tank prefab. So I'm going to open the tank prefab, and we have our tank base, and I will put simply the feedback for our tank movement in our tank base game object. So I will create two game objects. Let's create a new game object, and I will call it engine audio. Okay. And I will create another one, we will use it next, and it will be track marks. Okay, we will start with the engine audio. So all we need to do here is add audio source. And we will want to put here as the audio clip our space engine smalt 01. I will want it to be played on awake, and I will want it to loop. We will modify the volume to be something like... 0.05 and we will need to have an additional script here so we can actually modify the volume of the sound uh, depending on if we are moving or not so i will go to our scripts folder and i will right click create a new c sharp script i will call it engine audio let's open this script up in visual studio great let me paste the code instead of the start and update method. We will use our custom code. Here are the variables for our class. And those fields are audio source, which is the reference to our audio source. Public float mean volume and max volume. So the mean volume will be the minimum volume value that we use for our tank when it is standing still. And the max volume will be for the tank when it is moving. Next, we have volume increase which we will use as a step to increase our volume gradually depending on the time dot delta time so we can create this effect that we are speeding up and slowing down as well as we have a serialized field private float current volume next we have our awake when we get our audio source reference using the get component audio source and we are setting the current volume to be mean volume at the start because our tank is not moving when we load our game on start, so when our audio source is correctly loaded, we can call volume equals current volume, although I think we could also call it in the awake, it doesn't really matter that much. But it is safer to get in the awake references and in the start to set those parameters depending on what we want to have. And next we have our custom method called control engine volume. This method will take as the argument the speed which, with which our tank is moving. Now, if speed is greater than zero, it means that we are moving, so we are going to increase the volume of our sound. Now, if the speed is less or equal to zero, it means that we are stopping, so we are going to reduce the volume value of our tank audio. 
Now at the end we want to clamp the current volume between the min and max volume because uh, the, the current volume might be set to be a bit higher than max volume or be, uh, a bit lower than min volume. So we want to clamp it between those two values. And at the end we want to set the audio source volume equals current volume so we can set the volume of our audio source. Great! Now last thing to do is to simply call this control engine volume. So let's save it, let's go back to Unity. Okay, let me drag our engine audio onto our engine audio game object and now we have all things set up. We may want to tweak the min volume as I see I have different settings in my project to be 0.1 and max volume to be 0.3, the volume increase will be 0.2 and the current volume will be 0 0.1 although this is set through the script so we do not need to set it here. Let's save it and where do we call this engine audio to be played or to change the audio volume? Well we will need to go to our tag base and since our tag mover is responsible for moving our tag we will want to expose here an unity event so that we can assign the feedback because basically audio engine and track marks are feedback to our tag base uh, movement. So let's me open this script up, edit script. Okay, we are in the tank mover script and here we will want to simply add uh, below everything, uh, every other field, a public unity event, alt enter or simply right click and quick action because we need to be using unity engine.events library to be able to use unity events and we are going to add a fluid value as the argument that we want to pass. This will be the speed. We are going to call it on speed change and we are going to set it to be use, uh, equal new unity event. Now this is just because we do not want it to be uh, empty, to be null and this is only available in unity 2020.2 I believe where we are using C sharp uh, 8. So this is the newer version of the C sharp language which allows us to and instantiate our unity events in when we are declaring the variable. If we slide down we have the move method and here after the calculation of the speed we can call on speed change question mark dot to check if anybody is listening to this event invoke and we are going to put here this dot movement vector dot magnitude so basically it is not the speed but rather the movement vector so the input that our player gives our tank so if we are pressing up arrow we are going to get the value that is higher than zero if we do not press any arrow it will give us zero value so maybe i have uh, gave the wrong name to the variable there but anyways let's save it let's go back to unity okay great so now all we need to do is add on our tank base in our on speed change event a listener let's drag our and audio engine or other engine audio and we are going to select the engine audio control engine volume okay let's go back uh, let's save this prefab and now all the tags will have the same sound so it might be a bit too much so let's disable the static enemy so now if we press play we will hear both tanks roaring the engines and it is pretty strange so how we can reduce the noise from the tank engine of our enemy when we are far away from it. So what we have on our main camera is audio listener and I'm not that great with audio but basically audio listener decides how we hear the sounds in our game. So our audio listener is on our camera and our camera is somewhere here and not where our tank is. So first thing that we should consider is moving our audio listener from the camera so let's remove it and putting it on our player and basically our player is not moving our tank is so we should add here the audio listener to our tank of our player now we do not want to be it to be placed on every tank only the tank of our player next thing is we will want to open the prefab of our tank and select the engine audio and we have the setting called sp uh, spatial blend so it says how much this audio source is treated as a 3d source so uh, it affects the position and the uh, how far this audio source is from our audio listener. So what we will want to do is slide it to be a 3D sound. And now if we go back and save this prefab and if we press play, we should hear our, our tank 
and the enemy tank is pretty far away so we would not hear it as well if it comes closer we will hear it a bit better and if we move we will hear our sound much more uh, with much more strength so basically those are the basics of the audio listener and audio source so this concludes our audio now of course we could modify all the other sounds to be 3d sounds and make our player hear them or not hear them so maybe enemy is exploding somewhere in the distance and we wouldn't hear it but right now since our death feedback has the explosion sound variant and the explosion sound variant is a 2d sound we will hear all the sounds the same way despite they are uh, were uh, spawned somewhere far away from our player so in any case we are not going to take care of it right now right now i want to explain the second issue that we have which is the track marks so our player right now when it is moving it is not leaving any track marks and we know that tanks are pretty heavy so they should leave some marks where they were so with that maybe we know that uh, we went this way and we can uh, know how to backtrack from our path if this is some kind of a maze for example so let's stop the game and let's consider how we would implement the skid marks or track marks again we are going to go back to our tank and we have our track marks game object inside our tank base and this will be the object that will actually spawn our track marks but again we will need to create those as a prefab so let's right click create a new game object even here and we are going to call it track prefab or track mark prefab okay we want to reset its transform and we are going to add here a sprite render okay we will want to set the starting layer to be details and we want it to be details bottom so that we can see our tank over the track marks that we leave next we will want to select this appropriate sprite and we want to go to our sprites we want to go to our Kenny top down png retina and we should slide down to search for t and we should have track marks small single and as you can see this is this transparent track mark but it is a single track mark and there is a space which is the space where the track ends and the next one will go up okay so let me explain how we are going to use it let's first assign this track small uh, single as the sprite for our track mark prefab and let's make uh, out of this track mark prefab a prefab so let's drag it or maybe let's delete the prefab name since we do not need it track mark let's drag it as the prefab to the prefab folder let's delete it from our tank now all we need is a way to spawn those track marks so we are going to go to our scripts folder and we are going to right click create a new c -sharp script let's call it track marks spawner and let's open it up in visual studio okay i will paste the code that we will use so instead of start and update we are going to have a couple of fields and a couple of methods now as for the fields we have the vector to last position so this is the last position where we have placed our track prefab next we'll have the track distance so the distance between those track prefabs that we want to leave we will have the game object track prefab which will be the prefab that we have created a while ago and we are going to use the object pool and i was explaining the object pool in one of the previous videos so let's go to the definition quickly it is just a script that allows us to create our game objects and use a queue to reuse the already created game objects and to respawn them by clearing them and by making sure that we also destroy those spawned objects when we destroy the parent of this object pool in any case uh, you can check out the video for the object pool script for now let's continue let's use the object pool that we have in our scripts and we are going to first of all you know in the away get the uh, reference to this object pool and next in the start method we want to set the last position to be the current position of our tank and we want to initialize our object pool to take the track prefab as the game object and the object pool size as the pool size and we have arbitrary set it to be 50 for now so this will be the 50 tracks and after this much tracks have has been laid we are going to destroy the last one and spawn it as the next one next in the update we are going to simply check if the distance between the transform the so current position and the last position is greater or equal than the track distance 
so the distance between which we want to lay a next uh, track mark so if we have this we can set the last position to be the transform that position so we are at uh, the new position when we want to place where we want to place the track mark we are going to spawn the track mark using the object pool and we are going to position it as the transform that position and important thing we want to set its rotation to be the rotation of our tank so we can create curves with our track marks let's save it let's go back to unity okay so let's drag our tank mark spawner onto our track marks game object and let's add object pool so that we can use it for our track marks spawner and we need to assign our game object so let's go to our prefabs and let's select our track mark as the prefab for our tra uh, track mark spawner since it will set the object to pull for our object pool okay now Control s to save our tank and use this arrow to go back to our main hierarchy and now we should be able to see that our enemy as well as our player is generating our the track marks that we have created Let's try pressing play and let's see how our enemy behaves. So now we should see that our enemy is leaving track marks or skid marks behind it and they are rotated appropriately to how our enemy was rotated. As well as our player is leaving those track marks and they will start disappearing after we drive forward a bit. Now we will have one issue with this setup current that if we destroy our tank, let me try to destroy the, the tank enemy and those track marks will not disappear and we have this setup with our object pool where our bullets that were shot would be destroyed when we have destroyed our object pool now the issue is in our object pool script so for our track marks if we go to our object pool we will have the on destroy method at the bottom and it is calling the component destroy if disabled so it will destroy the game object if it is disabled but because we are not disabling those game objects, they will never be destroyed. So maybe this is a feature that you want to leave because those track marks indicate where the enemy was. But we could create an override for our object pool to always destroy the items when the items, the object pool was destroyed. So let's implement this functionality. So let's add a boolean flag in our object pool. So public pool always destroy. Let's set it to be false. And we can call this, the, so if this is set true, so else if item active equals false or always destroy, we are going to destroy the items. Let's save it. Let's go back to Unity. Okay. So now if we go to our tank, let's open the prefab, select the track uh, marks, and we are going to, uh, actually let's rename it to track marks spawner okay and let's check in the object pool always destroy if we now save the prefab control s and go back to the main hierarchy if we press play and if we now destroy the enemy we should see that those track marks will be also destroyed we have a bit too long range of our bullets but now the track marks were destroyed as well so this issue is fixed great thank you very much for watching if you want to support me please take a look at my patreon website Check out my Udemy course about creating a 2D top-down shooter using the URP and UNT 2020. There will be a link with a discount in the description if you are interested. Leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.